First question came from my guy Rave Kingdom. He said, I feel people need to respect Hollywood Brown's name a little bit more. I'm tired of hearing why we draft Brown instead of Metcalf. If you're a true Ravens fan, you would know that we could have got Brown and Metcalf in that draft. We ended up with Boykin. Will the Ravens make the same mistake in this year's draft by listening to the critics and losing an opportunity to get a monster player or actually draft the correct people this time? I See, I I don't... You, you confuse me because... um. He said, you're tired of hearing why we drafted Brown instead of Metcalf. And if you're a true Ravens fan, you would know that we could have got Brown. And we could have got both of them. But then and you said we ended up with Boykin. Then you said, will the Ravens make the same mistake in this year's draft? See, so it's, it's weird. So, so one, you ain't got to say all that about being a true Ravens fan. There's no true way to be a fan. Everybody got the way that they fan. That's their way. And that's okay. No matter what it is, whether you agree with it, whether I agree with it, whether that, it don't matter. That's their way. So we ain't got to try to police how people are a fan of their favorite team. It's completely fine. Um, but I just, I was a little bit confused on the wording with this. Um, it, uh, so I, I, I'm, I'm a little bit lost on that. But anyway, he said, Panther signed Chris Westry. Mark my words, that man is going to grow into a very good corner. Uh, he already showed shines on the Ravens. Our depth at corner is not good. Will Ravens address corner in depth in free agency or the draft? Uh, stay re- hashtag stay ready, be ready. Uh, yeah, stay ready so you ain't got to get ready. But yeah, both. Both. I think the Ravens are going to adre- address it head on both ways. Uh, and... They uh and, and I think it'll probably be after the draft, I would say, that they get whatever corner they're going to get in free agency. But I think they will definitely address it uh, in the draft. And depending on how that first round falls, could be a little earlier than later. And he also said, don't get me wrong, I would love a high power offense. But if Ravens are going to continue this elite defense with decent offensive logic, then why won't they go all in on defense? They've been they sure been trying. They sure been trying. They ain't been succeeding all the way, but they sure been trying. They got a Josh Bynes. They got a Calais Campbell. They got a Michael Pierce. Uh, but they tried for uh, Zadarius Smith. Ooh, they tried for Bobby Wagner. Ooh, they tried for uh, Larry Ogan Joby. So haven't quite been successful with some of their attempts, but that's why you keep shooting. All right, he said our defense is good, but it isn't elite yet. For example, Jadavian Clowney, Hightower, and others are available. They sure are. And um, maybe the Ravens are waiting. Maybe they're waiting. I think Jadavion Clowney goes back to the Browns. Hope I would love if he came to the Ravens. Ooh, I would love that so much if he came to the Ravens. Like, a Adafi away and Jadavion Clowney. Ooh, I would love it, but I just don't think it's going to happen. Next question came from my guy, BB. He said, what's up, homie? Talk about the draft. So, since EDC took over as GM, we have noticed his patterns in the draft. 2019 first pick was offense, second pick, defense. 2020 defense first pick, offense, second pick. 2021 offense first pick, defense, second pick. See, I thought you were going to talk about his other pattern um, that I think is even more noticeable about him doubling down. Whatever he drafts in the first round, he is for sure going to draft another one in a later round, whether third or fourth round. 2019, first round was Hollywood. Third round was uh, Boykin. 2020, first round was Patrick Queen. Uh, I think fourth round was Malik Harrison. 2021, first round was Rashad Bateman. Fourth round, Tylen Wallace. First round was Adafi Away. Fifth round, Dalen Hayes. Had to close my eyes because I, I wasn't trying to forget. Anyway, um, he said, okay, this year, Ravens will take Jordan Davis with the first pick and trade up to get Tyler Lindenbaum in late in the first round. These Ravens need that guy this year in the draft on both sides of the ball. I know this may be me dreaming, but we both know how important this draft is moving forward. Thanks for the channel, bro. It helped me get through this C-19. Oh, yeah. That, that wow. Um, oof. Man. Yeah, that was just crazy. Uh, but I appreciate you, man, and thank you. Uh, Jordan Davis. See, if I would love, if they got Jordan Davis, I would like that pick. I would love if, if they got Jordan Davis. They they also signed like a Jadavian clown or something. And mm, I, I, I would, that, would, that would be nice. Because I would like to see, uh, especially if they're going to go to a 4-3 a lot of the times. You have Adafi away. You have Matabike. You have Jordan Davis. And then you have uh, Jadavian Clowney too. I would love that. I, 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 I would love it. So... Hopefully, you will be right. Uh, we'll see. Uh, he also says, since the Ravens hired Mike McDonald, do you think the Ravens will trade up for the top pick and take edge rusher Aiden Hutchinson? No, not at all. I do, I do not envision them doing that at all. It would just 
to get to number one overall, even number two overall, it would just take too much. It would take too much, and I know they wouldn't be willing to give up all of that just to get him. He said it would make sense to have him in a way, plus Aiden knows Mike's system. Thanks again for the channel. Appreciate you, man. Uh, but no, nah, I, I don't see them doing that at all. I think there is a zero chance that they do that. Next question came from my guy, Anthony. He said, what's up? I hope everything is good with you and the fam. What are your thoughts on Trent McDuffie? Personally, I like his style of play. Yeah, he it's he he doesn't he's not really the fastest to me, but the when he like catches a pick or something, to me it. Let me know if I'm wrong. Well, let me know if y'all disagree. Um, but to me, when he catches a pick, he runs like Marcus Peters. He reminded me so much of Marcus Peters when he got the ball in his hand, cause he runs with it sort of uh with with the ball out, and it, it just looked like Marcus Peters to me, man. Um, but he, I, I like how he high points the ball, like, uh, and, and he's like, I think he's like 5'11", so he ain't the tallest, um, but he, I like how he plays it, um, and yeah, he's just, he's somebody that's always around the ball, man, so I, 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 I like him, I like his style, man. So it'll be, for me, I think it'll be like having like a little mini Marcus Peters on the field. Anyway, he said, um, if the Ravens really wanted to fill a position of need, uh, even th this, that there's so many, uh, I feel cornerback is the one that there are still players out there like Gilmore, Kyle Fuller, Chris Harris, AJ Bouye. I just want to get your thoughts on that. Um, so yeah, I, I wouldn't mind him at all. I wouldn't be mad at that at all. Um, I, I like his style of play and I feel like he is a, uh, what's the way to put it? Um, he's a, uh, a sort of opportunistic corner. He tries to make the most of everything, whether that's him getting an interception, even if on a tackle, he's going to try to knock that ball out as best he can. Um, so, yeah, I wouldn't be mad at that at all. And he said, also, I know some of us. <laughs> he said, also, I know some of us are hurt Bobby Wagner, about Bobby Wagner, but Roquan Smith is a free agent next year. <laughs> yeah, yeah you're, you're, you're right, but... I was about to say, you think Ravens will be willing to pay all that money? But he's a defensive player, so yeah, they will be. Next question came from my guy, Joe. He said, Engraven, hope all is well with you and the fam, as well as Pookie and all the team. Keep it clean. Appreciate that. Uh, it's been a while since I asked a question. While I doubt we will get DK Metcalf, I do too. Uh, if we were to get him, do you think it would still be a good idea to have a three-headed monster at tight end? If yes, who realistically would you like to see us pick up, either through free agency, the tr or trade, or draft? Thanks for your time and keep up the good work. Uh, and he says, stand up, Ravens and team, keep it clean. Um, yeah, I don't think the DK Metcalf is going to happen. As far as a three-headed monster, um, I don't even think you would necessarily need a, a monster, but it'd be nice. It'd still be nice uh, to have that quality because, again, just in case, just in case, stay ready so you ain't got to get ready. Um, Mark Andrews, he's been pretty healthy. Nick Boyle has not. Uh, so having another... Solid tight end. Uh, what's the dude from Maryland? Chig, Chig, I forget his name. Um, but having him, a guy with some speed. I mean, hey, Lamar been recruit. Lamar been recruiting all off. Like people keep saying, like uh, a lot of a lot of fans be like, oh no, we got enough on offense. This and that. Lamar been talking about that. All he been talking about defense too now. Uh, but he he been trying to do a little recruiting on offense now too, man. So yeah, the tight end from Maryland wouldn't mind him because it will give somebody with some nice speed. Uh, and it will give somebody young um, and, and somebody uh, just with a clean bill of health. Um, and I think when Nick Boyle, um, when he's healthy, he's solid. He's like a sort of extra offensive lineman slash fullback. Um, and his hands are solid. He don't get many passes thrown his way, but the hands are solid. Uh, he just he just got to stop the, the leapfrog. You like mm -mm, this. <laughs> But, but yeah, just having another a, a nice tight end, man. Um, just somebody who's ready, man. Somebody who's who's ready uh, and, and can contribute. Now they tried with Josh Oliver. I think he's still on the roster. Um, but yeah, man. So I go I go to tight end from Maryland. The next question came from my guy Danny. He said, "Ain't Graven, the free agency content is fire." Anyway, I feel like we are just two or three good moves away from another dominant season. So the question is, if you could pick two free agents still available, one from each side of the ball. Oof. And one draft pick to make us Super Bowl contenders. Who would you take? Thanks, bro, and best wishes to you and the fam. Hope y'all are well. Yeah, we're doing good. Oh, you put me on the spot, boy. Oof. So, two free agents and one draft pick. Wow. Um, free agents on defense. I will go. For me, it would be between 
Stefan Gilmore and Jadavian Clowney. Um, I would probably lean Clowney. Um, just for that more. Wow, he's only twenty nine. I thought he was older than that. Just for that him being more explosive. Um, and to pair him with a Dafe away uh, on offense. Ooh, on offense. Um. Man, yeah, Odell Beckham, he's hurt. He's he been hurt a lot too. So I, I can't go Odell. Gronkowski as another tight end. That would be nice. Have Mark Andrews and Gronkowski. And then you still got uh, Nick Boyle, but uh Jarvis Landry. Uh yeah, I I guess Jarvis Landry. Um Yeah, I guess as as far as the offensive players. Oh, well, J.C. Treader, too. J.C. Treader would be one. So either Jarvis Landry or J.C. Treader or Will Fuller. I forgot about him. Um, But, man. uh, So probably J.C. Treader or Jarvis Landry. Then as far as the draft. Ooh, one draft pick. Um, mm, I'll go Pickens. Yeah, this feels like a dream. So team keep it clean Welcome to another episode of questions from subs I mean it's kind of obvious We done did like 20 questions already We didn't even do the intro yet But what questions from subs is Is a series where you can ask any NFL question And we answer in a video Just like this You want to be part of it You can send an email to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com And if you don't want to do all that well, then you can become a Team Keep It Clean patron. If you want to become a Team Keep It Clean patron, you can go to patreon.com slash engravenvids and you can send your question right on there. So either way, it's up to you. Uh, I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. Y'all brought it as y'all always do. I mean, you've already seen the, the first couple of questions. Let's get into the rest. Next question came from my guy, David. He said, go all in. Good morning, my guy in Graven. Hope you're doing well. I had a thought after the Campbell signing and it's been stewing. I think I know what the Ravens' problems really seem to be. In the past, we choose a side and went all in. It was the defense and we got two Super Bowls. Now it seems like the front office can't seem to make up its mind. They seem to dip their toe into both sides of the ball, but never go after that guy. Uh, this offseason seems to be very heavy on defense. Okay, well, if that's what they decided to do, uh, then go all in. Well, first, Back to that first paragraph They never seem to go after that guy um, Yeah uh, They they tried with Bobby Wagner um, They tried with Darius Smith they, They've they been trying uh, But as far as the guys that they have signed um, Their signings have been Solid guys uh, Guys that Are good um, not, But not guys that, that Take them over the top yet uh, so we'll see how the rest goes Anyway he said uh, Well if that's what they decided Then go all in We know our offense is good enough With one or two more pieces To get at least 21 to 25 points So get a lockdown defense That will hold guys like Mahomes Brady and Burroughs To 15 to 21 points uh, That will bring us to be a contender Not just a thorn in the side Of those who consistently are <laughs> I like that one man uh, I personally wish that they will go in, go all in on the offensive side of the ball, not neglecting the defense, but not bending over backwards to make it number one and number two in the league. I want to see how good this offense can really be, but it seems the Ravens want to stick to their tried and true way of winning. You said it. I ain't got nothing else to say after that. Uh, and continuing, he said, if we went all in on offense, I believe we would be way more dangerous as an organization and other teams would be terrified to have us on their schedule, much like the Chiefs, the Bucks, the Bills, and even possibly now the Bengals. Uh, anyway, it seems like our front office really can't decide if they want to go all in on either side of the ball. So they make lukewarm moves on both and sit on the fence, but still lean more toward the defense. Sorry about the rant, but I hope you and yours are doing well. God bless. Oh, this was this was great. I, I don't disagree at all. You said it. You you said everything. Like, I ain't got no follow-up because you were spot on. Next question came from my guy Steve. He said, what's up, Engraven? This is Steve from West B-More. I know a lot of people are not big on picking up Melvin Gordon, but am I tripping? Or that would give us the best running back room in the NFL? Maybe best overall backfield when you consider a Pro Bowl fullback and an all-pro QB and a solid backup and a top three tight end? Whoa. Maybe best overall backfield? 
Well, backfield, you you said backfield is the running backs and the fullbacks, but then you threw Lamar in there and a solid backup. You're talking about Tyler Huntley and then uh, Mark Andrews, of course, the top three tight end. That's where you th- threw, threw me off a little bit. Uh, as far as Melvin Gordon, yeah, they would have a really good running back room. Um, I'm just wondering what it means. Is it Melvin Gordon's camp that was like trying to get his name out there? Or is it the Ravens? Are they is, is somebody's uh their rehab and recovery from the injury not going as well? Um, is it a possible trade in the works? Like I, I just I don't know what the Melvin Gordon stuff means. Um, but depending on what comes to fruition, we'll find out. Next question came from my guy Juan. He said, What's up? This Juan from B More. I've been watching you when you had, I think, eight or sixteen people. I appreciate that. Love that. Love the information that you put out, and it helps me stay updated when I'm working at the live casino in, in Baltimore. My question is, what if the Ravens throw a wrench in everybody's plans and trade back for the eight spots and pick up some quality picks and draft middle linebacker Devin Lloyd? Okay, I wouldn't be mad at that one. Now, watching him in the championship game this year as well as watching tape on him, reading his accomplishments, I see a lot of promise in him and see the next best thing since Ray Lewis retired from our team. He can li- literally do it all. Uh, let me know what you think. If the Ravens really did a number uh, on everybody at that presser and they pick them up, uh, you know that that's what they do. Because a lot of them pressers, even if it's not the, the liars luncheon, Ravens, they, they talk, they say one thing, and then they boom, they hit you with that swerve. Uh, and he said, thanks, bro. Now let me rest my fingers from this long question. <laughs> no, nah, this wasn't even that long, man. Um, I wouldn't be mad at, at a Devin Lloyd uh, because... That would, uh, but that I, I think Patrick Queen would be though. Um, but Ravens have shown already that again they they don't believe in Patrick Queen like that. They don't, and that's based off of what they've seen on film, what what he's shown them. Uh, it, it's been based off of the moves that they've made, um, and it's been off of, based off of the moves that they've tried to make too. Like if you believe in Patrick Queen, your first rounder from twenty twenty, if you believe in him, there's no Josh Bynes, there's no L.J. Ford. There's no attempt for Bobby Wagner. Those guys, no, you ain't getting them because you got it already. You got you got your guy. Um, so it's uh, I wouldn't be mad if they got Devin Lloyd because they're still trying to get it right now. He could help Patrick Queen out. He could be like a Josh Bynes. So he could do a Josh Bynes did for Patrick Queen, but somebody more athletic than a Josh Bynes. Somebody faster, quicker. Um, so that that could help. It could help a lot. So, I wouldn't be surprised if they did that. Um, I wouldn't be surprised or upset if they did that, as long as they don't neglect the offense. Next question came from my guy Cam. He said, what's up, Engraven? I've been thinking about this for a while, and I wanted to know your opinion on Jamal Lewis. I love Jamal Lewis. Loved him. Um, I, I, I was at the game where he went over uh, 2,000 yards. Um, I, I, I used to have the ticket from the game, but I don't know what I did with it. Um, but it was just special. Jamal Lewis was nice, man. Even with his little stutter stepping and a little paddle foot in the backfield. I, I, I love Jamal Lewis, man. He was that dude, man. And I remember just, um, I remember then playing Madden back then, too, with Jamal Lewis and that truck stick, him just running people over and then going for them long runs, man. Jamal Lewis was that dude, man. He, he, he was that dude for the Ravens, man. Anyway, um... He said, uh, I personally think he's criminally underrated. He was one of our only sources of <laughs> offense from 2000 to 2006. Outside of Shannon Sharp and later Ed Reed. <laughs> and he said, no, you didn't misread that. Oh, no. Trust me. Ravens fans know what you mean. When you say Ed Reed was Ravens only offense. Oh, no, no, no. We, we, we get it. Trust me. Um, he said he holds the second most rushing yards in a single game at 295. Yeah, I think Adrian Peterson ended up breaking that. Uh, and that's one of those Madden games that Adrian Peterson had. Uh, he's also one of the few people in the 2,000-yard club in which he joined in 2003. Uh, I personally think he should have been MVP that year since that year they shared it between Peyton Manning and Steve McNair. Rest in peace. Oof, that that was crazy, man. What are your thoughts on Jamal Lewis, and do you mind sharing what you remember of the 2003 season when he reached the 2,000? Oh, wow, the 2,000-yard milestone. Okay, see, we already shared it. Look at that. I, I guess I should have read the whole thing, man. Um, but, yeah, man, Jamal Lewis, he was, he was special, man. He was definitely a, a, a special running back. And um, just that, that physicality that he brought, um, the fact that you just felt like if he was going one-on-one with somebody, that was it. He was going to win it for sure. Um, 
I don't know, man. He he was just like that, man. And I, I remember, uh, yeah, he's like you said, he was the one of the only sources of offense. <laughs> oh, Ravens, Ravens just and again because they specialize. You you can't be special in everything. Well, well, some teams can, but Ravens have been um, on offense. They've been struggling for a while, man. This has been a while. Defense, they they got that. They got that. But on offense, it's been it's been a struggle. That's why um when you really like think about it, um and and you you see it the way that they've used Lamar Jackson and the way that uh still be, it's been a struggle for them with receivers over time and whatnot. You you just don't get surprised because it's almost like they're not used to good quality offenses. So. Um, it's like they sometimes they almost don't know what to do in a lot of cases, um, but hopefully they they continue on this trend where things are getting better, especially at the wide receiver position. Um, so I love the hires of uh, T. Martin and Keith Williams. Um, now they brought on Kerry Dixon too. Uh, but yeah, man, I just um, Jamal Lewis was like that, man. He he was like that and. I know a lot of times the question gets asked, oh, who, which one was better, Ray Rice or Jamal Lewis? And he, he, neither one is wrong to me. Neither one is wrong because both of them, they were nice. Um, I usually say Ray Rice because I just felt like he could do more, um, especially like his contributions in the passing game, not just screens, but actually like wheel routes and stuff. And Oh, I remember my favorite uh, receiving touchdown from Ray Rice was um I think it was against the Saints that that game where Flacco was in the camera he was yelling at the refs and Flacco was not team keep it clean I said oh whoa they, they, y'all say Flacco don't show no emotion oh watch watch that Saints game um but <laughs> Ray Rice went a little, ran a little wheel route and he beat either the linebacker or the safety I forgot who it was Flacco put it on him back in the end zone that was perfect um but e- either either answer would not be wrong whether you say Ray Ray Rice was better Jamal Lewis was better. Uh, Ray Rice wasn't out here trucking people like Jamal Lewis was. Ray Rice, he, he was, a little, he was, he was uh, his strength was underrated, but he wasn't no Jamal Lewis strong. Like Jamal Lewis, that, that stiff arm and him running you over, it was nasty, man. But I, I, I love both of those guys, man, so shout out to him. Next question came from my guy Alex. He said, what's going on, my guy? hope all is well. You're starting to become a regular part of my day and routine now. <laughs> oh, well. So I'm coming at you uh, today with questions about our secondary. It seems like overall we are pretty healthy and at our healthiest at this part of the team. Uh, meaning that that's the part of the team where we have the most depth and are healthiest. Huh? But to me, I just don't feel like we are that deep at that part of the team. Safety or corner. Because they're not. As safety, Ravens got like 20 safeties on the roster right now. They got Marcus Williams, Chuck Clark, uh, Brandon Stevens, um, Ardarius Washington. Uh, I said Marcus Williams already. Geno Stone, who they just re-signed. Um, Tony Jefferson. Uh, so yeah, am I missing anybody? Probably, but yeah, they got they got a bunch of safeties. Um, but he said, don't get me wrong, the signing of Marcus Williams was great, but how deep are we really at safety? Is the Sean Elliott coming back? Well, no, he signed with the Lions. Uh, and even I don't think anybody thought he was gonna come back even before he signed with the Lions. Now, quick question about him because I couldn't remember. Uh, but wasn't he injured in both his first two or three years in the league? Yeah, his first two years he was injured. His third year he was healthy. Then the fourth year he got injured twice. Um, he said, but I still feel like even with him, we may need to add another safety. Well, you ain't got to worry about him no more. I know we just re-signed Geno Stone, but I'm not sold on him completely and we'll be a lot more comfortable if we add another quality depth guy as safety. Uh, what do you think about that? Um, you still got Ardarius Washington, so you can see what he does. Uh, you got the draft, so you can see what comes of that. Um, there was that talk that they were interested in Honey Badger, but I don't think they signed no Honey Badger. Um... But, yeah, so you got Kyle Hamilton. He could probably, since his 40 wasn't all that, maybe he'll drop. Uh, we, we, we'll see, man. But uh, I'm not, as far as safety depth, I feel like they got a lot of safety. Like, they're not going to be able to keep all the safeties that they got right now. So he said, also worried about our depth at the cornerback position. Now, now there, that's that's the problem. Um, he said, the guys we have at the top of the rotation are definitely quality in Humphrey and Peters. But beyond that, what do we really have behind them? Really nobody. You got question marks. You got got you got safeties that could play corner for you, like Ardarius Washington, like Brandon Stevens. Uh you got those guys, but other than that, no. You got Kevon Seymour, 
They signed him to a future deal. I think Robert Jackson is still on the team, too. So, yeah, not much depth. He said, especially more worried than in years past, considering the defending AFC North and AFC champion, uh, Cincinnati Bengals have arguably one of the top three most potent passing offenses in the league, and we have to play them twice a year. We saw what they did to a roughed-up secondary Vols last year without proper depth. Um, not even that they didn't have proper depth. Ravens were just hurting. They were just hurting. Like, it's been like this the past, like, couple of years with Ravens. They start off the season, and they have so much depth at corner. And it's like, oh, let's go. And then guys just start dropping. They just start dropping. And um, so, yeah. Anyway, um, I know how you feel about drafting a big play receiver with that first overall pick, but we have uh, at 14. But I was initially thinking about an offensive lineman, hoping that the kid Neil uh, from Alabama or Charles Cross will fall to us, but they are likely both to go in the top 12. Yes, they probably will not be there. But anyway, he says, so now I'm thinking with that 14th pick, we should really consider a cornerback. Almost certain that Sauce Gardner will be gone by that time, but my gut instinct tells me that Stingley Jr. will still be around when we pick at 14. After that 40 time, I don't think so. I don't think so, but, yeah, I don't think so, but it, you never know. Even if Stingley is gone, the McDuffie kid from Washington will still be around, and a lot of people say he is a ball hawk and fits the bill of what a Raven truly is. This is not just my words. This is the words from, my, from guys on ESPN and around the league. Uh, I know there will be a good receiver left at that pick, and I know there will be a good defensive tackle or defensive end we could choose with that pick. Uh, but what do you think about the potential of taking one Derek Stingley Jr. or Trent McDuffie at the cornerback position? Or would you take one but not the other if given the opportunity? What are your thoughts on this and the overall outlook of our secondary in general? Oof. Um, yeah, the secondary is definitely, uh, they are at a lack right now, lack of depth. Um, and I wouldn't mind Trent McDuffie. Um, no health issues there. Derek Stingley, fast, uh, great corner. Just, again, the health issues, they scare me. That would be my biggest concern, and that's a huge concern because that's your best ability is availability. Um, but if he could play his suit up, okay, cool. But if he can't, he's going to be hurt. Um, so, yeah, I, I wouldn't mind a Trent McDuffie. Like I said before, he reminds me of uh, of Marcus Peters, um, and he, he even runs like Marcus Peters. He plays like him. Um, so, yeah, I wouldn't be mad at that at all. I, I don't think that they're going to take a receiver at 14. I wouldn't mind if they did, but I don't think that they will. Um, so, since I don't expect them to do it at, at 14, well, in the first round at 14, uh, as, as long as they address it in the second round, cool. Anything beyond that, <laughs> not cool. Um, but as far as the secondary, to your question about the secondary, yeah, it's, we're lacking right now. So, I think they address it both in the draft and uh, through free agency as well. I think they double down on corner in the draft. They get at least two. And I know they did say that they're going to probably draft at least like two or three. And I think that that would, that would actually be the truth. I don't think they were just lying about that one um, because there's such a lack there. But I think they'll address it both through the draft and free agency. Next question came from my guy, Ken Pachi. He said, what's up, Engraven? I'm so excited for the draft coming soon. My question today is, what if Sauce Gardner somehow doesn't go top 10? Do you think the Ravens will pick him up at 14 or would they go a different route? He could be a very great weapon on defense or at the very least he would be good for a trade. What? He ain't going to draft the cornerback and trade him. But, yeah, I, I could see the Ravens drafting him. Too. I could, the, the Ravens, I, I think for sure, um, are going to go defense in the first round. Um, whether that's cornerback, whether that's an edge guy, whether it's a defensive tackle, um, I think it's like I'm like 150% sure they go cornerback in the first round. I mean, excuse me, defense in the first round. Um, so, so that's, that's the Ravens, man. Um, I, I just I don't see them going offense in the first round. Um, now, unless they trade back and get multiple first round picks or they stay at 14 and trade back into the first round. Then I can see them going offense and defense, but I think if they just stay at fourteen and they only have one pick in the first, I think it'll be it'll definitely be defense. Whether that's Sauce, whether it's Jordan Davis, um, and what's crazy again, they they're gonna have a lot of options, and that's what makes this thing so tricky is that they have so many options and guys that they could choose from who could help their team out. Um, so it's gonna be hard. They they they're gonna have some tough decisions to make because. Whatever you do at 14, there's going to be somebody else that you could have possibly taken, obviously. Um, 
And it's going to be a lot of people that question why you got the guy that you got. And there's going to be a lot of people that's happy with the guy that you got. Um, but what they just need to make sure, no matter who they draft, is that they draft somebody who's ready, who is going to make a significant impact from day one. Somebody who's going to be on that field a lot. Not a special teams guy. And it ain't no offense to special teams guys, but not a special team guy. Somebody that's going to be out there and be a solid contributor from day one. You're not drafting a project. You're not drafting a special teamer. You're not drafting a backup. You're drafting somebody who's going to be on that field a lot.